doing this and uh, having us today on the webinar. Um, my name is Michael Chesson. I'm the Channel Sales Manager uh, here at Sales Fusion. We are a marketing automation company out of Atlanta. Um, here's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be talking about uh, a little bit of marketing automation overview, uh, give you a little bit of uh, background about our company, um, talk about our great integration into Enforce CRM. Uh, we're going to show you around the product a little bit and some of the new features that we have. And uh, we're going to leave some time for Q&A at the end. Uh, hopefully you guys will have some good questions for us. And uh, we'll give you guys uh, the tools to follow up. So Sales Fusion was founded in 2007. We're based out of Atlanta. have over 400 customers in 21 countries. Uh, we are focused on aligning sales and marketing. Uh, we want to empower your marketers to uh, get great content in front of prospects and empower your sales reps uh, to have a view into the buyer's journey so that they can have intelligent conversations with their clients. Um, we are led by marketers. Our CEO is a former CMO, uh, and our CMO has been in marketing for a long time. Our VP of product has a marketing background. Uh, what we really want to do here is make uh, give it give marketers uh, in an easy and intuitive way to uh, build out nurtures, set up landing pages, score leads, things like that. Um, so marketing automation allows you to uh, streamline the creation and the management uh, and the analysis of campaigns and leads all in one place. So you can attract those leads, then you can build out campaigns and nurture the leads, and then you can uh, uh, apply a landing score to those leads. And then once it hits a certain threshold, you can pass it on over to sales in a seamless manner. You can then see how the campaigns are performing. If you need to flip it back to marketing for more nurturing, you can do that. Uh, your sales rep can do that inside of the CRM so that that's easy for him and that's the system he's used to, that he's used to using. Um, some of the biggest advantages, again, aligning sales and marketing, a seamless process that creates a consistent experience for your prospects uh, and giving you the ability to track and analyze the marketing performance so that you have insight to what's working and what's not working. So as you can see here uh, on the left, life without marketing automation, you got your leads, you send out some emails to the leads, hopefully you win a client. But you don't really know what's working, what's not working, uh, and you don't really have any insight into the buyer's journey. So with marketing automation, uh, you can increase marketing contribution to the pipeline, uh, therefore increasing the number of opportunities uh, that are generated uh, from nurtured leads versus non-nurtured leads. You'll have a, a higher win rate with your better sales and marketing alignment, higher conversion rates to uh, marketing qualified leads, and eventually the idea is higher revenue growth. Uh, without marketing automation, there are less leads in the funnel and more leaking of the lukewarm leads outside of the funnel. One of the things we see is uh, with companies without marketing automation, they send out a campaign or they have a list of leads to call on and, and your sales reps are just cherry picking leads to call on while potentially warm leads that have been active on your website, things like that, are falling through the cracks. That's what we want to prevent. So our platform uh, is a complete platform with all of the things that marketers need to have, uh, but with advanced scoring features and nurturing features that you can take advantage of uh, as, as your marketing sophistication grows. We want Sales Fusion to uh, bring something to the table, and we want it to be an easy system uh, so that you're investing in product development um, or helping us invest in product development to enhance our user experience. Uh, make it easier for marketers to do their job and easier for sales reps to do their job. Um, we feel you know, marketers deserve access to uh, an enterprise-grade marketing automation solution at a price that they can afford. Uh, so we offer the lowest total cost of ownership. Uh, we have one tier of pricing, which we'll show you a little bit about later, so that our lowest paying customer and our highest paying customer 
have the same functionality. Um, we're committed to your success. Uh, we, we have an on, an, a comprehensive onboarding uh, support and services program. Uh, we can even uh, work as an extension uh, of your team and, and execute sales fusion on your behalf. So, uh, you know, we have an enter enterprise grade marketing accessible uh, with, with a no-fail approach to marketing automation in these cases. Uh, we want to understand your marketing needs. Um, and we understand that part of marketing automation is, is not just the, the technology and pulling levers, but it's also expertise, uh, good process, and the people behind it. So you can see uh, on our little marketing wheel here, um, we want to work with marketers to design an approach to marketing automation that's tailored to uh, each of our customers' needs. So. If you decide that uh, this is a need that you have, but you don't have the resources to execute it, but you do have the budget, um, we can provide you with things like you know, proven emails and, and marketing automation platforms for both inbound and outbound marketing. A uh, team of experts who are doing this all day long with you know, experience in marketing and marketing technology, um, and a range of affordable managed services designed to support our customers uh, as they move through the, the process. Um, we have a, nearly a decade of, of experience making marketers successful, so uh, if resources are the issue, you look no further than our managed services program. Um, our customers can drive inbound traffic by utilizing tools like SEO, Google AdWords. Um, we offer landing pages and forms so you can capture the prospects and begin to engage them through our automated nurture programs. Through our lead scoring, you can identify and prioritize the leads that you want your sales guys to be calling on, so they're not banging their head against the wall. Uh, you can track all of this to understand what's working uh, so that you can make better decisions going forward. So what we talked about there is a little bit of the do-it-yourself model versus the do-it-for-me model, and, and we offer both. Um, if you have marketing automation background and you have the resources, uh, you can execute sales fusion on your own, um, leverage, leverage our scalable platform, live phone support, access to marketing experts, um, and it's more ideal for businesses with uh, a team built out. The, the do it for me method is going through our managed services, so you leave the expertise and the execution to us, uh, leverage our scalable platform phone support and all of that in addition to our, our, our great marketing team. So this is better off for, for small teams who uh, you know, more focused on the big picture um, and, and just don't have the resources to do it internally. Um, we have a few different programs for that and you can, uh, you can reach out to uh, Scott Weber at the end here if, if you choose to take advantage of any of these. Um, moving on here, here's a little bit about just, you know, what the do-it-yourself and, and do-it-for-me platform, uh, the difference between those, but as you can see, uh, you just have our marketing expertise if you're uh, uh, taking advantage of our managed services program. Um, we're here to uh, not only pull the levers, but provide you with our, our extensive marketing experience. Um, one of the advantages of Sales Fusion, we integrate into multiple CRMs. Um, integration is essential to marketing automation. Uh, it's tough to truly align sales and marketing without a really strong integration. Um, and that brings us to Infor, uh, which is probably our strongest integration. Um, our, our native integration with Infor uh, powers for an innovative buyer's journey. It shows current and historical marketing activity at the lead and contact levels. There's automatic synchronization between user, lead, contact, account, opportunity, task, and campaign tables. Uh, it doesn't need middleware. So uh, you know, with the strong integration, you're not going to have things getting lost in, in, in the sink or anything like that. Uh, and you'll uh, allow your sales rep to 
have an insight into the buyer's journey without having to leave the CRM. Um, with our, our personal onboarding, support, and trained services, uh, customers uh, throughout the Infor environment have driven more revenue with Infor CRM and Sales Fusion. Uh, we currently have uh, about 100 Infor CRM customers. We enable SaaS on present and hybrid configurations. Natively integrates with all Infor CRM versions back to 7.5.2. Uh, it seamlessly, seamlessly replicates the database, uh, fully integrates lead scoring, allows direct send of bulk email campaigns to Infor CRM campaign members, and it synchronizes the user, marketing list, static lookups, lead, contact, account, opportunity, task, and campaign tables with no middleware. So now what we want to do is we want to hop into the product demonstration. We want to show you uh, the power of Sales Fusion and some of the upgrades that we have made. Um, we recently released a new UI uh, and we recently made some upgrades to our nurture programs and the logic that you can build out there uh, as well as uh, our, our new drag and drop feature on our email builder. Um, so right now I'm going to hand over the reins to Cole Adams. Cole's one of our solutions engineers. And uh, Cole's going to walk you through it a little bit and show you some of the advantages of Sales Fusion. Uh, Cole, take it away. Yeah, thanks. Uh, so over the past year there's definitely been a lot of, a, a lot of uh, innovation and, and updates to the Sales Fusion platform. Uh, we've, we've released a new UI, uh, a new email builder. We've revamped the way our dashboards look, added some functionality to nurtures, and of course continuing to iterate on other areas of the application as we, uh, as we go forward through this year and into the next. Uh, what you'll probably most readily notice if you, if you have seen Sales Fusion before is the more streamlined user interface. The way that we've really tried to build it out is just a, a, a more seamless approach to get to where you want to be within the marketing automation platform. To do that, if you go into the actual menu bar, we've broken the application down into three core areas. Easy to figure out what each one of these does, but just all the same, the create section where you go to build out new content, manage to edit anything that you might have already built, and analyze to jump into any kind of reporting or advanced, uh, advanced diagnostics. The actual dashboards that we've updated, as you can see, we've kind of gone to a more card-based structure. Now the thing about these dashboards, at least from this home page, what, this, what, the, what all of these dashboards together are showing you is a high-level look at everything that we are tracking within the platform. Uh, this is any new leads that have been created, any new leads that we've pulled in from Infor, any new leads that have come in off of a form, any kind of conversions that uh, you've gone from anonymous person to a now known individual. Any kind of opportunities that might have been generated, whether that's from the N4 side of things or something that's been created directly within Sales Fusion. You also have access to any kind of uh, emails and the deliverability, so any kind of sent, opened, or clicked emails. Web activity, taking a look at just general activity that we've, that we've been tracking through our web activity tracking script. Any kind of forms that might have been filled out, events that might have been registered for or attended, and a relatively new addition here, the actual marketing qualified account. This is really Sales Fusion's answer to the, uh, to the wave of account-based marketing um, speak that has been going on in the market recently. It's a, it's a very hot topic. And it's something that Sales Fusion has done for a very long time. It's just now there's a nice, a nice name to go with it. Uh, so what the marketing qualified accounts really is doing is allowing you to give a score to an account so you can quickly look at the account level to see which account that you have in your system that is, uh, that is scoring the highest. For example, maybe you've been uh, interacting with one particular lead. Turns out you aren't getting much, um, much communication out of that particular person. But within Sales Fusion, you could drill into that account and see that 
while sure that person isn't showing much activity, this other person at the same company is. Maybe we want to start focusing our attention on that person. It's just giving you a, a nice view as to which accounts that you uh, have in your, in your system are showing the most kind of activity, the hottest leads, uh, but from an account level. It also allows you to uh, declare uh, certain accounts as key accounts. So if you do have certain accounts that you really need to stay on top of, you can star them, mark them as key accounts, and then quickly get that information on this dashboard section. And then as far as the scoring goes, it's using the same type of lead scoring profile uh, that you would expect to use in any other kind of activities. Each one of these dashboards, though, since we are in more of a card-based structure, you can actually drill into each one of these dashboards by just clicking on the View Full Performance. What that is going to do is show you the information that sits behind this, this dashboard. Uh, so you can see the actual individuals, uh, new leads that were created, and export that information if you did want to perform any other kind of ad hoc reporting. However, if you did want to dive into any one particular dashboard at a deeper level, we have some quick access tiles at the top, dashboards, SalesFusion's own internal CRM. This is something that really is more for the marketer. So the way that we really see the application working is sales stays inside of Infor, marketing stays inside of Sales Fusion, and they rely on that tight integration to actually push and pull information that, uh, that each side wants to know. The CRM inside of Sales Fusion is just a nice way for the marketer to have a view into what sales is seeing. Uh, it also gives them a view of a particular leader contact's journey a nice way to actually see what has been happening with a particular individual uh, across all of the different marketing aspects. And then you also have access to an asset library. This is also a relatively new addition. Uh, it's just really a place where you can store any kind of content that you want to store within Sales Fusion. Uh, you do have unlimited storage space with our asset library. You can store any kind of docs, PDFs, images, things like that that you would actually want to use in any kind of content that you're building out uh, for, for your marketing efforts. If we do drill into the dashboard section, we could choose to look at a specific email campaign. And just to give you an idea of the type of information that you're going to be getting with these, with these dashboards, you get, of course, all of the standard tracking information, things like unique opens, unique clicks, your deliverability rates, as well as total activity. Now, what you'll also get within Sales Fusion is where that activity is coming from. If you actually want to know what uh, or who is clicking on each link in this email, you can, of course, drill into that particular dashboard drill into a link that you are curious about. For example, maybe we want to know who's clicking on our CAN-SPAM compliance link. It immediately refreshes the right-hand side of the page, which you then still have access to export over here. The export option, of course, just giving you the ability to, to generate some quick ad hoc reports. And another really nice feature that we've, that we've added recently is the associated landing pages. What this is really doing is giving you a closed loop report. So as a marketer, I can see exactly what impact this email had on this particular call to action. So within each email that you're building out inside of Sales Fusion, you can of course link it to uh, one, two, three, any number of landing pages that you might want. And then as people are interacting with that email, maybe they're going to that call to action, you can see how many people you drove to that call to action. That's all well and good, but you're also going to want to know how many people actually completed that call to action, if they bounced off once they actually got there. So this, this uh, dashboard is also going to show you that. How many people did you drive to the call to action? And of those individuals, how many actually completed it? So it's a nice way to see the impact that this email had on that call to action. 
And then, of course, you can always view the email. Maybe it's an email that you sent quite a while ago and you've forgotten what that actually looked like. You can always view it. It's going to have a heat map of where people are clicking, especially useful if you do have multiple versions of the same link in different areas of the email, or if you're just curious as to what was uh, drawing the most people's attention. So that really covers the, the updates to the, the dashboard section and, and uh, really the, the layout of the new UI. What we've also made strides in is our email builder. The actual email builder itself is now a completely drag and drop email builder. Of course, if you are more comfortable with HTML, you can still drop HTML into any one of these emails. Uh, but the actual drag and drop builder we think has made it much easier to to generate a good looking email even if you have zero experience with generating an email. You of course have options here, standard email, an A-B test, text only, or you can just generate a template. With the A-B test you can do single factor or multivariate. We generally would recommend going single factor first unless uh, unless you really did want to go with changing everything about an email and an A and a B test. Uh, then you also have basic and advanced testing where you can choose to either go with a 50-50 split or something a little bit more granular where you send a, a smaller segment to a, uh, to a portion of your list. Changing around any of the sender information, giving it some kind of uh, some kind of just a campaign name folder that you want it to live in. The subject line, here's where you can actually personalize it to make it look exactly as if it's going to the person that uh, you, want to, you want to communicate with. Just giving it that look and feel of a personalized email. And you can just build your subject around that. Same goes for the display name and the from and reply to email address. If you did want the actual sales rep, of course, just bring that in. Same with the emails that you're using. It's just a nice way to, uh, to make the email look like it is from the person that they have most likely been talking to, going to the individual uh, that, that it's being directed towards. Then when you're building your email, you do have the option of drag and drop or using your own code. If this does look familiar, we uh, definitely thought that MailChimp uh, had the the best email designer out there. So we, we took a few design cues from them and have tried to make it uh, as easy a process as possible to build out one of these emails. So you do have access to just start from scratch, start from a theme that we've generated. You can rebrand it however you want. Any templates that you might have saved or any emails that you might have sent and forgot to save as a template. With each email that you build out, you do have access to the styling, where you can change around the links, how they look, uh, what font we're using, background colors of the page, background colors of each individual section. But the components is where you can go to add more items to this email. You can add a row with a column and maybe just drag in some social buttons. Once you have these social buttons in, you can drill into that component and make additional changes. Maybe Google Plus is not a big push for you. Maybe the email option isn't something very useful either. Maybe you want LinkedIn to be the first thing that people see. Maybe you don't want a label. Maybe you actually want to change the styling of the buttons to be a little bit more round. All of these options are perfectly and easily possible. You have access to all of this, all of this styling to make this email look exactly the way that you want it to look. Personalizing the message even from here, just drill into any kind of text area if you wanted to, add any personalization fields. And then of course with the images, you have access to the asset library where you can pull in any image that you might have uploaded. But if you wanted to use some other image, you always have access to the image editor. The editor itself, just making it very easy for you to uh, make those changes without having to jump outside of the application. So you do have some powerful options here. And then each change that you do choose to make, 
a copy of that change will be saved within the asset library if you ever did want to use that again. With each email that you build out in the drag and drop builder, it's going to be a responsive email, which you can always test by uh, sending a test email to yourself or just going into this preview section. And one thing that does still remain with Sales Fusion through all of these, all of these nice updates, you still have access to the advanced testing feature. Uh, advanced testing is where we actually send this email off to have it uh, checked against a spam diagnostics filter. It's really checking the content of your message to make sure it's not likely to get caught in any of those traps. But you also get a batch of screenshots in return that shows you what that email is going to look like in a very wide range of devices. Outlook, Lotus Notes, Gmail across a few browsers, Android devices, Apple devices, all types of clients. And it's really going to give you, uh, or, or rather Sales Fusion is going to give you a hundred of those tests for free each month. The rest of the build process here though, choosing your list where you can still choose between any segmentations that you've built using information that we've pulled in from Infor, distribution lists, uh, any kind of previous marketing activities, things like did they receive this email but not open it or did they open it and not click on any link. You can use all of these types of segmentations, uh, choose a date and time and then just queue it up to be sent out. So the actual email designer here is is definitely one of the one of the nicer areas that we have updated uh, in the platform over the last year. I did mention some nurture updates. The nurture program is really where marketing automation lives. Marketing automation always stems from these nurture programs and that's largely because the processes that you build out here are going to be performed in an automated action. So once you actually get into the flow designer, this is where you can set up these processes. Uh, within Sales Fusion, you do have the ability to go with either a, a more newsletter style approach, nurture program, or something that's more event based. Uh, so things like, did they complete this landing page? If so, drop them into this campaign. And you can use any demographic information or any kind of marketing specific information to really trigger these people to go down different paths. Uh, important to note that everyone moves through a nurture program at their own rate, so it's always uh, good to keep in mind uh, that fact that, that people will move at their own at their own pace. Uh, it's something that we see just in general with, with uh, buying cycles now. By the time they actually do reach out, they've probably done 75 percent of their research. Uh, at least according to a report that I believe Gartner or Forrester uh, released. But these nurture programs, as you can see, it's just a yes and no based branch logic system. We actually think that this is probably one of the nicer designers to look at and, and uh, create a program from. The flow here, very easy to see. You can quick, quickly tell just by looking at, a, at the icon what we're actually doing. This is going to be an email. And then we're going to check to see if they've actually clicked a link within some set number of time. Uh, in this case, three days. We could also check to see if they opened it or if they clicked on a very specific link. And again, if they did, if they didn't, build out a process from there where we could continue to send them more information. We could add more conditional steps looking at demographic information or marketing activity. We can actually add information back into Infor from here. This is where the CRM actions come into play, where we could add a task for a sales rep to follow up with. We could update a field on a contact or lead level, maybe change their status from warm to hot. We could also just send an alert directly to that person. All the while, you can create as many of these nurture programs as you would like and use these jump steps and jump labels to actually move people to more appropriate campaigns. Uh, the reason that we have built these, these jump steps out is to allow people to move, uh, move people to another more pertinent program. It also allows you to build smaller, more concise programs that people can flow through. You can have a prospecting program. Maybe that prospecting program 
leads you or funnels you into one of three product programs. And then based on the outcome of that product campaign, if they have generated a high enough score, maybe they've continually been interacting, you could use a lead scoring profile to then push them into Infor for the sales team to take over from there. Uh, you could also just have them jump into a uh, current customer program if they were to buy from one of those product-oriented campaigns. So these nurture flows, really just a nice way to automate a lot of your marketing activities and still check to see what exactly is going on with this person using information that is most up-to-date from Infor and most up-to-date from the actual marketing platform. And then lastly, looking, looking more uh, into the future, we are very excited uh, to have a, a uh, at least in a future update, uh, probably mid Q1, uh, a, a landing page revamp. So currently our landing pages are a WYSIWYG style builder. Uh, something that you can, of course, jump into the design, uh, but there's definitely some HTML that you will you will need to to alter uh, if you do want to build a template on on our landing pages. We're transitioning more into the drag and drop builder that you saw previously with the email builder, uh, and that drag and drop builder, like I said, we're we're hoping for at least by mid Q1. That's also going to come with a form builder. Uh, that form builder we actually expect to uh, release by the end of the year. And that will better enable our customers to actually just generate a form that they want to place on their site. Uh, rather than have to go to a, a third party or if they are more comfortable with a third party form builder, use that. So a little bit forward looking there, but that is the, the next big rollout that we're expecting, uh, at least within our development. Of course, a few more updates to uh, general look and feel, uh, some, some more under the hood uh, improvements and, and layout uh, features, but that, that really kind of covers what, um, what I wanted to show you guys today as far as the, the updates have, have gone over the last uh, over the last year. Of course, we still have a very uh, configure, configurable and modular integration into N4 that we are uh, always improving upon uh, where we can. Uh, so that, that integration is still, like Michael said, probably one of our stronger integrations uh, to date. Absolutely. Um, I think now let's take it into some, uh, some Q&A. What, what kind of questions are there out there? Well, right now it looks like we just have a couple, um, but the first one that we have uh, or had come in is when you get a chance, I would like to know when the, th the throttle feature will be added to the new email building system. Throttling into the, so there is currently a global throttling option where you do have the ability to set uh, how many emails a certain lead or contact should get over, over a certain period of time. And then within our nurtures, uh, the, they have a more, they of course have a, a throttle that you can set for the nurture as a whole. But what we would recommend is uh, setting up those pause steps to basically break the communication up um, there. So there's a few different ways you could go about building out a throttle. Uh, it could be a global just for the entire platform. It could be nurture specific, or it could just be pause steps within a nurture program. Okay. Our next question is, if I'm in the middle of creating my email and want to use an image not in my image gallery, can I upload it into the email or would I need to upload it into the gallery first, then upload it into the email? So that's actually all, a, uh, all streamlined within the email builder itself. So if you did want to actually upload a, an image, for example, Jump back in here. Uh, if we want to bring in an image, we'll place it there. So when we click to add, it's going to take us into the asset library. Now if I wanted to add a file, you just click add here. 
in here with the select this image after upload. As soon as you've uploaded it, it's going to choose that image as the image that you want. So you're kind of doing double duty there. You're adding it to the asset library for later use and also adding it to uh, the email in one fell swoop. I see a question out there about uh, integration and um, just wondering if we could show how the integration works. Cole, you think we could hop into Info real quick? Yeah. So the integration itself, I would say the heaviest lifting the, the biggest part of the integration is actually something that you can't see. It's the bidirectional sync just hooking into that S data. Uh, the actual information that we're pushing in, uh, absolutely. We're pushing in all of the marketing activities that we are tracking in the system uh, that you actually do want to push over. So as I said, it is a modular and configurable integration. So if you didn't want to push web activity over, you do not have to. The, give me just a second here and we'll get logged in. The actual information as it sits, we'll go into a contact. The, the majority of the information is actually sitting on the lead and the contact level. Uh, as we are tracking everything down to the individual, it, that's where we're placing it within the, within the CRM. Uh, so we'll jump into my own record. And our integration is going to create a few custom custom entities that we would push marketing information into. This could be clicked links, for example, any link that I've clicked within an email. It could also be any landing pages that I've completed, any events that I might have registered for or attended, any web activity that I have currently generated, or any emails that I've been sent. And each one of these is going to show you how many times I opened, how many times I clicked, this is all native information that you can actually build reports off of from within Infor if you did want to do that. Uh, if you didn't want to push this information in natively, certainly don't have to. That's what we have the Launch Sales Fusion action item here for. This is going to open up a view directly back into Sales Fusion for your sales reps. Uh, this is where you can see the actual buyer's journey, where you can choose to filter out whatever type of activity you have seen or whatever I've done. So in the past 30 days, apart from web activity, I haven't been sent an email, I haven't opened an email, but we can always go back in time, maybe a full year, to see what I've actually been sent. So you can quickly see what type of information uh, I've, I've actually been interacting with. Looks like I've on the 21st of July, and as a sales rep, if I actually wanted to know what, uh, what email this was, I can click into it and get a look at how that email looked when I received it. So you can see it's personalized to me uh, and it's just basically showing you what I've actually received. Really the biggest benefit here I would say is that it gives your sales rep a, a starting point of a conversation. Uh, you certainly don't want to get too far into the realm of creepy and say I know exactly what you were looking at. Uh, but it does at least give you the, the opportunity to say, uh, did you have any questions on the product that that white paper was related to? Uh, I, I saw you were looking around our site. Is there anything I can help you with? Uh, things like that. The scoring summary, of course, just linking uh, and showing you what type of, uh, what score I have for whatever profile is currently selected. Sales Fusion, you can have multiple scoring profiles, so if you actually wanted to drill into a specific product's scoring profile, you can quickly see what uh, or how I got to that particular score. You can see the current status of my email based on the last time we did send an email. Valid. That's good. Whatever distribution list I'm currently on, the send email option this is actually a really nice feature, giving the sales rep the ability to send a one-off Sales Fusion email. So the templates still built within Sales Fusion, still generated on that side, but it's going to still track the email exactly as if it was sent directly from the Sales Fusion side of things. So the sales rep will still be able to see the interaction that they took from this, this email. And you can also still use personalization information. So those templates can be generated on the Sales Fusion side for mass release. 
and then of course the nurtures showing the sales rep what nurture programs they're currently in giving you the ability to add or remove them from a certain program. Awesome. Thanks, Cole. What other questions are out there? Well, it looks like we have a question about deployment. Um, is this program an on-premise application? And if so, what would be the email client? So SalesFusion is the, uh, the email service provider, the ESP. Uh, the application itself is a cloud-based uh, SaaS application. Uh, we do integrate with on-premise implementations of Infor. However, the application itself will always sit in the cloud. Um, and the only real relation to your own internal email server is going to be an SPF and DKIM record that we will help you set up during the onboarding process. It really just says emails sent from our sending IPs are verified to be sent on your behalf. And what that really does is makes it look exactly as if the email came from your servers, uh, but still it's coming from ours. Thanks. Um, our next question is, um, is there a bundle to support the legacy network client in addition to the web client? Yes, uh, the bundle, the, all of the bundles that we have uh, are compatible with both web and LAN, uh, going back to 7.5.4. I believe that the 7.5.2 bundle is web only, uh, but I will have to uh, confirm that. Okay, and it looks like our last question, at least for the moment, is how do you get opportunities information? Uh, that's a table, that's a standard entity that we do sync with. So we, if you did want us to pull opportunities into Sales Fusion, uh, we are just replicating that, that table schema as well and pulling in all related information into Sales Fusion. Okay, and we had one more sneak in here, um, and it's about email building. Are you able to copy the text from a Word document and paste it into an email template? Yes. Simple and straightforward. That mm -hmm. looks like um, our last question. Perfect. And uh, just to uh, confirm there, 7.5.2, LAN and web available. Uh, one other thing that I forgot to mention, we do have a knowledge base that is now within the application as well. So if you ever do want to jump in and uh, figure out what exactly is going on or if you have a quick question that you didn't want to reach out to support or your onboarding rep for, uh, the knowledge base is a very good place to go for any of that information. Do you mind if I ask or if I pose one more question here? Yeah. Um, does Sales Fusion work with Infor CRM Cloud? Uh, yes hosted and uh, on-premise versions uh, up to current. Great. Well, thank you guys. Um, I want to make sure everybody knows that we are recording this session. Um, there are some of you who are unable to attend today, um, but if you also um, wanted to share this with coworkers or if you want to view this presentation again, we will make it available on customerfx.com. And also, if you think of any questions um, following this webinar, go ahead and email um, either my uh, myself or Scott or info at customer FX and we'll be happy to make sure those questions get answered. Um, but I want to say thanks again to both Michael and Cole for the presentation today and taking time out to show us these new features and um, give some of you clarity about what Sales Fusion is, how it works. Thanks guys. Thanks everybody. Thanks for having us.